Okay, here comes the third question, and I quote it. Question three. I'm intrigued by the relationship between the unconscious and the conscious. Manifestly, the unconscious is itself capable of promoting its cogitations up into consciousness. Very familiar to me is the go to bed with the problem and wake up with the solution pattern, which characterized much of my working life. But what is the mechanism by which the conscious mind decides and then acts on making something conscious unconscious? So the question here is, um, the, the, the essence of the question is at the end, the, and I'll read it to you again. What is the mechanism by which the conscious mind decides and then acts on making something conscious unconscious? Well, uh, this is uh, a, a huge question, uh, and, and there's not, no um, general consensus, I'm afraid, um, by way of answer. But I think the majority of uh, colleagues in the cognitive neurosciences would hold the view that it has to do this rendering of something conscious unconscious, the, the relegation of something conscious to the unconscious has to do with automatization. The unconscious portions of our mental life seem to be relatively automatized. And the conscious portions seem to be those parts which re require relatively greater degrees of deliberation, of decision making. That is to say, the conscious portions of our mental life seem to concern those aspects of our, uh, of our thinking, feeling, behaving, which are concerned with relatively unpredictable outcomes. And conversely, the unconscious pole of the mind uh, uh, concerns itself with relatively more predictable outcomes, where there's a relatively automatized mechanism, which uh, it can be um, assumed with a relative degree of certainty that the outcome will be that which is desired. There's no need for further thought, further, further deliberation, further problem solving in relation to these automatized unconscious processes. So let me say that same thing in a slightly different way. It's that mental processes which require consciousness are those which require feeling. Remember, from my point of view, the essential property of consciousness is feeling. It feels like something to be awake. The function of feelings, as we've learned in this week's lessons, the function of feeling seems to be something to do with what I was talking about a few moments ago in relation to question two. That is to, that is to do with, with a biological scale of values. Things feel good when they enhance your chances of surviving and reproducing, and they feel bad when they do the, when they, when they uh, are likely to lead to the opposite. So something needs to be conscious when we need to feel our way through it, when we need, when there's a problem, a biological problem that needs solution, that needs solving. Once you have found which action works in terms of that scale of values, then there's no longer a problem and no longer a need for consciousness. There's no longer a need to feel your way through it. So to answer the question, the evidence suggests the general view of most of my colleagues uh, in the cognitive neurosciences uh, tends toward the view that consciousness is associated with um, situ problems, situations which require sentient presence and a feeling of one's way through the problem, and that unconsciousness, uh, unconscious mental processes are the relatively automatized ones, which that is to say, the ones which attach to already solved problems. Now, that leaves out of account one other aspect of the unconscious, which is the Freudian unconscious. Uh, as far as Freudian psychoanalysts are concerned, uh, there are many aspects of what is unconscious in us, which are certainly f not solved problems, that they, in fact, quite the opposite applies, that there are issues which uh, are hugely troubling and insoluble, um, which seem to make up a greater part of what they call the unconscious, the so-called repressed or dynamic unconscious, 
And I'll come to that uh, when, when I address the next question. That is to say, question four. Uh, 